Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we're on another installment of the Reviews Roundup, where I go over EPs, albums, mixtapes, whatever that came out this past month, uh, and give them a score and a mini-review. And um, as always, there is a Spotify link down below for all of these uh, projects you can easily go see there. Hit that link up there. And um, yeah, we are in the month of February 2024. Uh, this video was made in April. I'm a little behind. Uh, also, February was just pretty massive, so without any further ado, let's hop into it. We've got Forster by Moonlight, uh, a masterclass in progressive and melodic house production. Uh, shimmering sound design, various soundscapes, and a constant mix that, um, yeah, really makes this a, like, house lover's dream record uh, in terms of its uh, mix quality, uh, for sure, too. So I will give this a bow tied 8 out of 10. Then we've got Eliminate, Get Off the Internet, and out of left field comes Eliminate with a bizarre debut album. A mix of trap, bass, and hyperpop styles. Get Off the Internet was nothing I expected, but everything I enjoyed. Um, this record is incredibly consistent in its tone, sound design, and mixing, and can bounce around from genre to genre without any real repercussions. The whole thing is jumpy, bouncy, and full of energy. My only gripe is that there isn't any real standout tracks. Uh, most of the track list is solid, but nothing that shines above the rest individually. And I'll give this a bow tied 7. We've got Grey with the Contra EP. Uh, as of late, Grey has been a major disappointment for me, but this is something special. Uh, it really feels like my pain and gripes listening to Grey within the last five years have completely disappeared. Um, each of these five tracks feels fresh, energetic, and a far cry from the cringy production of the past. Um, there are some less than amazing lyrical content all throughout here, but nothing too egregious. Um, I was shocked how much I loved this, and I'll give it a bow tied eight. Then we got Nostalgics with the Star City EP, a fairly solid bass house EP from Nostalgics, but one that is downgraded by lackluster vocal mixing and features. From a purely production standpoint, the tracks have some real grit and crunch to them. It's just a shame the vocals brought this down a bit for me, and I'll give this a bow tied six. Then we got Caster with Sorcerer's Symphony. Uh, Caster has refined his operatic dubstep with his latest Monster Cut EP, Sorcerer's Symphony. Bunning together classic string instrumentation and crushing dubstep sustains, this EP is magnificent. Uh, individually, the tracks can hold their own, but as a collective, they are that much better. I'll give this a bow tied eight. We got Clockvice with the Bittersweet EP, a seemingly odd collection of squeaky and jumpy EDM tracks. Uh, in the end, I wasn't really vibing with the overall style and production, uh, or really the direction of this EP. I'll give this a bowtie six. We got Everin Maxwell with Challenger. Uh, bright, dreamy dubstep is the name of the game here, and it's a blissful endeavor. Uh, each track has its own charm while holistically sounding like one big journey. And I'll give this a bowtie seven. Then we got Infected Mushroom with Reborn, a collection of Reborn tracks throughout Mon uh, <laughs> Infected Mushroom's discography. This LP is one of their most linear and steady records to date, and I don't mean that in an overly good way. Uh, barely changing up some of the tracks, everything sort of just blends together for one giant hour-plus-long Psytrance track. It really wasn't all that needed. And I'll give this a bow tied six. Then we got Kai Wiston with Zol 3. The final installment of Kai Wiston's Zol project is here, uh, and very much what I expected. Um, part experimental, part underground, part electronic. Uh, Zol 3 is the least kind of out there of the three EPs, uh, but the most consistent in its theme. And I'll give it a bowtied six. Then we got Lemater with the Red EP. After a slight hiatus of releases, Lemater is back with a very serviceable by the numbers Lemater EP. And um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I do love the Lemater sound. It's just nothing really new within their discography. But um, yeah, that's enough to say that I gave this a bowtied 7 out of 10. Then we got Midas with Unity. Uh, once a pioneer of melodic dubstep and a personal favorite of mine, uh, Midas has seemingly refused to innovate. Uh, while 2021's Lost LP was ultimately a standard modern melodic record, uh, Unity is a straight up mess. Um, half of the tracks are the same old song and dance that he's been producing for years, and while the more kind of adventurous house tracks that close out this album, uh, they're just kind of rough and meaningless to me. Uh, guess you can only be a pioneer for so long. I'll give this a bow tied four. We got Niels Hoffman running in a dream, a beautifully atmospheric progressive house that truly feels like the landscape of a picturesque dream. Uh, that being said, most of the production is fairly linear and by the numbers progressive house, uh, in which most of the charm of the album comes from uh, its vocal features more so than not. So uh, I will give this a bowtie seven. Then we got Shy Girl with Club Shy EP, uh, an incredibly consistent Eurodance EP with non-stop energy. Uh, Shy Girl brings forth a conglomerate of electro, tech, and hip house elements for a quick, snappy, and light-on-its-feet record. I'll give this a bow tied 7. 
Then we've got Twirl with Hooligan, uh, bringing together all the sounds and genres that dominated 2023. Uh, Twirl's Hooligan feels more like a derivative collection of tracks rather than an, an homage. Uh, each of the tracks here are good, but clearly trying to imitate artists like ISOXO, Knock2, and Skrillex. And ultimately, I'll just give this a bowtie to six. We got Wingtip, Laughter from the Other Room, uh, another bright and poppy EP from Wingtip with fun production and lighthearted storytelling. This EP is an easy listen that can be played pretty much anywhere at any time. I'll give this bow type six. Then we got Zara Larson with Venus, uh, one of the blandest dance pop with just the most generic, boring lyricism. Uh, Zara Larson can't seem to find her stride throughout the record as she skips and bounces through a variety of tones with no cohesion or narrative through line other than the generic uh, relationships are hard. And so I'll give this a bowtie to four. Then we've got uh, yeah uh, Kanye and Ty Dolla Sign with Vultures one um, yeah Kanye and Ty <clears throat> excuse me team up for one of the most generic pop rap records uh, to hit the market this year uh, a few lowlights but even fewer highlights uh, but when the mix in but when you mix in the kind of blatant racism that Kanye spits uh, to liberate himself in some areas um, you're just asking for issues um, honestly this is just a super tricky album to rate because you want to separate the the man from the music and oh separate the, the artist from the, the music and stuff, but um, Homie's literally being anti-Semitic on the album. Um, so other than Burn, I don't really see a reason to go back and listen to anything from here. So I'll give it a Bowtide 5. Yeah, Kim Petras with Slut Pop Miami. Uh, yeah, absolutely disgusting in every way. Uh, basic ass beats, horrible songwriting, and possibly the most mind-numbing sound design I've ever heard. Um, my biggest problem with this EP is that Kim Petras has shown us that she can make serviceable kind of sexy dance pop uh, records with 2023's Problematique, but it seems like she completely forgot how to make music after releasing it. Um, nothing about this album is pleasing. Uh, in fact, there are multiple times I was visibly shook from what I was hearing, and I'm uh, not someone who is like, uh, immediately hears like sex noises and stuff and think, oh, this is bad. This is terrible. It, it just is bad. And it, it is, it is, it is terrible. Uh, and this will get a bow tied zero. Then we've got Andrew Bayer with Places I Belong, a really great mix of commercial sounding EDM genres, but meant for a niche listener. Uh, you've got three great trance and house tracks that each kind of bring something new to the project here. And I'll give this a bow tied seven. We got Fabian Mazur with Dusk. Uh, Fabian Mazur's debut LP is chaotic, disoriented, uh, and a kind of smorgasbord of trap tracks. Uh, embracing a hype fueled and hip hop centric sound design, the tracks lean heavily into a 2015 esque style of production, uh, making for a pretty dated soundscape. And I'll give this a bow tied five. You got Gyrofield with The B EP, uh, a collection of B-side tracks uh, from his latest LP. Uh, the highlights are definitely um, the alternative mix versions of older tracks, but uh, overall, uh, it's got a fairly consistent and serviceable IDM tone to it with wonky and D&B fusion all throughout. So I'll give this a bow tied seven. Then we've got Quadeca with Scrap Yard, a collection of to be scrapped tracks. Uh, Scrap Yard is a sonically chaotic yet tonally cohesive record, uh, teetering, teetering the line between YouTube diss, trap, diss track rapper uh, and dense art pop producer. Uh, Quadeca has seemingly found his true sound in all of that trash. And I will give this a bow tide nine. Really, really good. Love that one. Then we got Subtronics with Tesseract. Uh, Subtronics continues to pursue uh, some of the most bizarre and stylistically weird bass music out there. Uh, but for how much gold there is on this record, there's equally as much dirt. Uh, I commend Subtr Subtronics' ability to pack so much sonic diversity into this record, but that coincidentally is part of what's holding it back. Um, harsh synths and weak vocals are littered throughout um, alongside some questionable mixing. Um, you can hear the rumbling, rumblings of what might have been an incredible and unique record, but for now we'll just have to settle with it just being unique. And I'll give this a bowtie six. We got Tin Liquor with Cold Enough for Snow. Uh, a new artist for me, Tin Liquor has quickly risen as one of my personal house favorites. Uh, creating an atmospheric, progressive, and melodic house record with Cold Enough for Snow, this may not be the flashiest of albums, but this is truly fantastic. Uh, it's almost as if they have thrown out all of which makes modern house derivative to bring back um, to a time and place where house really reigns supreme. Um, overall, I thought the vocal focus tracks and long multi-movement tr uh, tracks as well kept me fully engaged from start to finish, and I'll give this a bowtie eight. Then we got Vanek and Brasse with Quiet in the Back Seat. Um, yeah, these two bring a lively yet murky electronic alternative rock fusion to this collaboration, and I thought it was uh, fairly solid, so I'll give this a bowtie seven. 
We've got MGMT with Loss of Life. As a classic MGMT fan, um, I would say this record uh, <laughs> seemingly only makes sense when you're high, which is, I just feel like, classic MGMT. Uh, conceptual in nature and bold in production, Loss of Life is far from MGMT's most commanding of records, um, instead resorting to a more slowed down, more methodical track list, and uh, one that I didn't enjoy, so I'll give it a bow tied seven. Then we've got A Cloudy Sky, There Must Be Something Here. A Cloudy Sky's fourth studio album is definitely his best. An exploration of dense narrative storytelling and lush in Neutronica production, There Must Be Something Here is a journey through the visionary mind of its creator. Primarily tackling his struggles with mental health and relationships, A Cloudy Sky captures his raw emotions through word and sound. And I'll give this a bow tie eight. We got Shock One, Organism Algorithm. Uh, I may have history hangover with how much I loved A Dark Machine, Shock One's 2019 album, but uh, this record really doesn't do anything to stand out or separate itself from the current pack of the EDM land landscape. That's fairly by the books, drum and bass, albeit with a harsher sound design, but uh, this feels like a compilation of tracks rather than a narrative story, and I'll give it a bow tied five. And we got a Crystal Skies with the Stardust LP, uh, bouncing around from a variety of dubstep subgenres like color bass and melodic dubstep. Uh, Crystal Skies Stardust is a solid improvement over his more pop rock focused debut LP. Uh, there are some nice melodies and collaborations across this record, but nothing, nothing overly above and beyond your standard melodic dubstep album. Uh, there are some moments of gold, but there are some moments of why is this here? And so I'll give this a bow tie six. And finally, we have the Caracal Project with the Self Reflections EP. Uh, the Caracal Project brought forth a new five track EP chock full of heavily distorted drum and bass bangers. Um, with a dark and gloomy atmosphere, it's a style that isn't uncommon in the DNB scene, but often lacks accompanying production elements to keep it fresh. A notion that this that is the true asset of this project. Uh, whether it's a bouncy beat on Stone Cold or a string solo under uh, or on Under the Northern Lights, uh, there is a certain X factor that this EP has that most DNB projects lack. And I'll give this a bow tied eight. So let me know what you think of any and all of these projects in the comment section below. I'd love to hear them. And uh, yeah, other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.